Good morning. Good Sunday morning to all my Rosh Hashanahs. It's Rosh Hashanah, y'all. And if you just tuning in, I just started, so you didn't miss nothing yet. Um, it is Sunday morning, April eleventh already. I just want to say, um, to the family and loved ones of the late rapper DMX, may God be with you and give you strength and peace during this time. Is not easy losing people. It really isn't. And then I know when I lost my brother back in 2009 and my auntie, I think in this 2004, I think something like that. People say, oh, to be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord. I don't want to hear that because all I was thinking about was they're not here right now. You know what I mean? I can't see them right now, but I don't want to come off and start my channel like that and start the video like that. But I just do want to say to his family, to his loved ones, may God give you strength and peace during this time. Um, also, it's been a very relaxing, peaceful morning, and I haven't had one of those in a long time. Um, I woke up, I read the Bible, I woke up, I was talking to God. Sometimes I don't go to God and be like, Heavenly Father, you're matchless. Nobody can step up to you. You're ma I just talked to him and be like, thank you, Lord, for waking me up this morning. Now, okay, so let me tell you what happened today. I talked to him like I'm talking to y'all. Like I talked to my family. I talked to him that way. Um, and I'm starting to really, 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 like every time I turn around and every time I look on social media or see YouTube channels, somebody's having another baby. Somebody's getting married. Somebody is extending and expanding their family. And I don't look. And then I found out my one of my little brothers, he's about to be a dad. So I'm just like, OK, um, I can't help but to think when it's going to be my turn. You know what I mean? I know things happen. And God is a God of time and ages. He's El Olam which is time and ages. He's the God that, he's the God of dispensation as well. He's not going to give you everything that you want um, all at once. Yes, I'm in the middle of braiding my hair, so that's why it looks kind of jacked up or whatever. Um, <coughs> excuse me. He's not going to give you what you want all at once, but just knowing that he knows what you want it should be exciting enough for me to just wait and just take care of all my business, chase my you know, chase this money is what I call it, you know, secure my wig, secure bags and all this other stuff like that. And just keep working and doing what I got to do. But every single day I think about it, there could be somebody out there that wants the same thing that I want. It's just to how come I haven't ran into him yet? It's what I always used to ask because I'm just, I'm just thinking, you know, <clears throat> where you at, you know? Um... Yeah, so, and it used to be a situation to where I could not watch certain YouTube videos or TVs or movie, TV TV shows or movies to where people were pregnant or people were having a baby and all that. Like, I remember, I don't know what season of Real Housewives of Atlanta it was when they would show Kenya and her daughter, and then they would show Shamia and her daughter, and then they would show Candy and her about to have her daughter, and then they show Portia and her daughter. I'm like... I can't watch this. So for like a whole couple weeks, I didn't watch that season. I didn't watch the episodes. Um, <clears throat> by the time I did watch that season, it was almost towards the end of the season. You know, when Cynthia Bailey got proposed to by fine Mike Hill. Oh, he fine. Anyway, um, yes, I I couldn't watch it because I, I'm thinking it's not me. So I don't want to see it. But um Yeah, I was there for a while because I just knew it was not going to be me. And, you know, I don't know what I was going through at that time. This was way in November of like 2000, I want to say 19 or 20. No, no, I think it was in November 2019 when I, you know, felt that way. But right now I'm just like trying to live life day by day. Um, trying to stay new, trying to figure out new stuff to do. Um, even all the way down to the new hairdos. Now, I bought some clippers from Amazon.com. And I was going to shave my head, like, on the sides. And then just keep this going. 
You know what I mean? And I think I still may end up doing that. All because I'm thinking, let me just try something new. And maybe I'll get new results. Maybe I'll find a new way of approaching things. Or maybe I'll just become new. Maybe the attitude will change. I'll get approached by new people. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yes, I have a, a cold. And my nose is running. I have a cold right now. My throat ache is gone, thank God. So I have been, this is the rest of my emergency from yesterday that I didn't drink. But I think I might go ahead and gulp that down. And I do have vitamin C right here with a little tangerine. And I also ate a couple of strawberries yesterday. And I do have some vitamin C gummies. Um, let me show y'all. Let this uh this right here i bought some more of these the last time i had some of this it was in a little smaller bottle but yeah i got some of these because um <clears throat> which i need to take some now actually um because i i'm you guys i don't like being sick um but i'm glad i don't have a throat ache like i did yesterday but anyway i just only came on here to say that um it's time for me to secure my wig it's time for me to just do something different it's time for me to just go all out um Yeah. You know, when a person is really sick and tired of going in circles in their life, they're going to do something different, you know, and it's not for a wow factor, you know, nothing like that. But it's just your inner self knowing that I did something new and I did good. It was hard to let this person go. or It was hard to let this thing go. But I know it was all for bettering me. Like, for instance, I never thought I would be in counseling. I have my second counseling session next Friday. And I never thought I would be in that position to where I'm like getting help up here. Cause I think I said it before, everything starts in the mind. So if this is not healthy, ain't nothing else going to flow right. That's just how I feel. You can exercise and be healthy. You can eat healthy and all this other stuff. But if this ain't healthy up here, cause I believe in working from up here and have everything flow right at the bottom. <clears throat> That's just me. Some people don't believe in counseling. Some people think there's something twisted or crooked about it or scammy about it. But to me, this is because I'm in it now and I'm doing it. It's nothing like people think, you know, you don't, you're not crazy. You just need somebody to talk to. And maybe these professionals will help you see things in a different way. So you can approach things, excuse me. So you can approach things in a different way. Did I say approach things? So you can approach things in a different way. So you can approach things in a different way. Um, <clears throat> and that's why, in a way, I'm kind of glad that my sister gave me the number to who she's talking to. So that way I can get that help because God knows I need it. And I'm going to stay in it until the end. And even if I feel like, oh, I need another, I need a couple of sessions. I need some more. I'm going to call that man back and be like, yeah, I need to talk to you. Um, because this is it's like I faced something today and I thought... I have nobody to talk to but you, you know. I mean, I don't know. That's just how I feel. Um, so, yes, you guys, I'm just, you know, working on trying to do something new. But everything is a thought right now. I just want to make sure that I'm able to put those thoughts into actions. And um, I want to make sure they're positive, you know, positive thoughts. Um, certain things that I used to do, I don't want to do no more, you know. Um, I used to be only, uh, I mean, even when I, when it came to dating, I never used to want to date black men because of the way, what it stemmed from is me being molested by my biological father at 14 years old, three times. And it was when his girlfriend at the time and her son was away and I was by myself <clears throat> and all that. And I hated black men. I hated men in general. I never wanted to wear nothing tight fitting. I never wanted to wear anything that was showing my shape. I never want shoulders out. I don't even want my freaking arms out. You know, I don't want to show my legs. I don't want to do anything. I just want to wear baggy clothes, baggy clothes. And I still do now, but now I still do wear like tight fitting stuff because I've actually gotten over it. Now I just want my dad just to be there. You know what I mean? Some people don't even talk to their, um, violators. People don't, you know, they just don't want to have nothing to do with them. But I know in order for me to get right with me and so I can see Christ when I die, I want to make sure I talk to my dad and let him know this is how you made me feel at this time. Now, seeing him and seeing how he, you know, his state and everything, 
I'm just like, I can't be mad at this man for the rest of my life. I will never be functional. I will never have a functional relationship. I will never be, um, I will never be cool. I will never be right. I have to talk to him and let him know how I felt at 19 years old. You know, I told him everything in the book. And before I spoke to him verbally, I was planning on going to go hide out at Starbucks until he left. Cause we were staying in my auntie's house at the time and he went to visit, um, my auntie, which is my dad's sister was, um, <clears throat> staying next door to her mom and they were in a duplex so it was my grandmother which is my dad's mom and my auntie which is my dad's sister and we were staying with my dad's sister and I was just like um let me just go to let me just go to Starbucks with my homegirl I'm not I'm not about to sit up there I want to stay here until I leave but then I'm thinking you know what at 19 years old, I felt, you know, and I believe God was telling me to do this in order for me to have a functional relationship because I broke up with a guy a really great guy that I probably, probably not could have still been with to this day. But in order for things to work out in my relationships with people in general, not just with a significant other, I had to talk to my dad and I had to get that out the way. I don't want no counselor in between us. I don't want no somebody making, integrating him, making him feel bad. I had to talk to him for me at 19 years old. I want a functional relationship in the future with a really, really great guy. I don't want to get married to this guy and be intimate with this guy and not want to do anything because I'm still thinking about what happened to me when I was young. I want to be able to be like, you know what? Forgiveness is so freaking powerful and you never know. You know, it's it's one of those things to where that person's probably sleeping at night. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. And you're still up wondering, you know, I just feel like, let me go ahead and forgive because I had no other choice. I had literally had no other choice. I can't hang out at Starbucks and forget about the problem. It's always going to be when you know there's something big that you need to do, like forgive somebody, talk to somebody, um, you know, whatever it is, it's going to eat at you every single day until you do it. And that's what was going on with me. So I said, I got to stop this now. I got to cut this thing at the head right now and just say, you know what? I got to go talk to my dad. And now that I'm slowly starting my relationship back up with my dad. Um, I feel like it is going to get better because I never thought I'll forgive him for what he did. I never thought I would do that. I was mad for six years. I didn't want my sisters, my mom talking to him because I feel like I'm, I'm going to disown y'all if y'all talk to him because I feel like y'all are siding with him against me. And that's how I felt at 19 years old. But as time went on and as I became older, I'm glad I did decide to talk to my dad. And I'm glad that I am talking to my dad now and trying to develop more of a relationship because, you know, besides God, that is the first, your your dad is the first guy that you will ever love, you will ever have, you, you know, there with you or whatever, whatever the relationship is. Um, even though I I can't tell him that I love him because he just never been there. Even before the whole molestation thing, he just never been there. You know, make conscience decisions after decisions just not to show up. And when you have children, regardless of what, who, what other new woman you're with, your children shouldn't, that woman shouldn't take the place of your children as far as showing affection. I don't care if you love this person more that you had kids with and that person less. Your children, from the oldest to the youngest, should have been treated the same way across the board, you know. And, okay, fine. You had children by different women. You may love this one woman more, and that's why you're taking care of her kids. That's fine. But you have children who should be treated the same. However you felt about each of these women has nothing to do with the children who didn't ask to be here. So, um, I used to hold that against my dad, too. But, like I said, you know... Um, not anymore. You know, I still think what, how things would have been had it not happened. But at the same time is, I feel like that made me stronger because I'm not locked up in padded walls, straight jacket, going crazy. I thought at one point I was struggling with my sexuality. Like I started looking at women when I went in Job Corps, like in 2014, January of 2014 to June, 2005, I was like, I started looking at 
women. I never voiced it that before, and I and I was just like, oh my gosh, it's this girl that went to Job Corps. Um, I'm not gonna name her name just in case if you know she has a channel and somebody might know her, but she was high yellow and she was really light skinned and she was just like, she had kind of like bushy eyebrows, but she was gorgeous to me and I just kept looking at her, looking at her, looking at her. And I remember one time she saw my, me and my oldest sister and she she was giving us one of these like, oh my gosh, twins, twins, twins. And I kind of like when people look at me and my sister like that. Like, they think we twins. I'd rather people say that y'all look like twins. Are y'all twins? Than to say that my sister is my mama. Because I know she don't like that either. Okay? She's only 20 months older than I am. Okay? Get it right. She's not my mom. She's my sister. So when people used to say, oh, mother and daughter. Yeah, mother and daughter. No, miss ma'am. No, Mr. Sir. It's not like that. She's my sister. And I just had a little small crush on her. And I don't know if it was just where I was up here. Um, forced myself to like women so I don't have to think about guys. and what You know, ugh, you know, because for a while I never wanted to go out. I was afraid of men. I didn't know how to treat my first real, real boyfriend. Not the one I met in Job Corps, but the one that I broke up with until I talked to my dad. I didn't know how to treat him. I wasn't sociable. None of that stuff. I was always afraid. You know, I just would sit at the table and be quiet because I didn't know how to initiate conversation or have something to add to a conversation. But um, I was looking at this woman like, oh, my gosh, she's so cute, you know. But that's it. That's the only girl crush or girl looking at because she was cute time that I've ever had in my life. Now, I do have girl crushes like celebrities. Like, oh, my gosh, Kelly Rowland, Julianne Moore, you know, Anne Hathaway, you know, Emma Stone, all those. And those are just like whatever. But I I really was looking at this woman like, oh, my gosh, she is so cute. Like, so cute. And she ended up, because I went to Job Corps for culinary arts, and we used to always catch the bus to Westwood because I was an off-center trainee. And look, I have a mustache. Yeah, I was an off-center trainee working in uh, the VA hospital in Westwood. And we would do our cooking classes over there. And then we would do something like help the other people at the VA hospital wash dishes for some points or some credits or something like that. And um, I helped out a couple times serving food to these people. And I'm thinking in my mind, this is something I think I want to do. Because at the time I was a cafeteria worker wanting to work in food service. But now I'm a custodian. Say, I'm custodian rolling. I'm custodian. And I like it because um, they leave me alone and let me do my work. And I don't have bosses that's all over me trying to hound me, tell me what to do. But I decided, uh, let me see how long this video is. Oh, that's fine. I decided, you know, in order for me to get better overall, in order for me to get better overall, I have to talk to my dad to get better. But anyway, I think I was saying, oh, yeah. And the same girl I had a crush on ended up being in my cooking class. And I just remember we left class early, but we was trying to hide from the cooking teacher lady. So I remember she grabbed my hand. The same girl I had a crush on in job court. She grabbed my hand and we went ducking under the freeway underpass. I'm thinking, oh girl, what are we about to do? And I was scared, but we both were trying to duck and hide from the teacher because we left early. You know, the whole class left early. And we were trying to duck from this teacher. So I remember she grabbed my hand and we're ducking like this under the freeway underpass to get to the bus stop so the bus can pick us up. And when we got on that bus, we was laughing. We was like, <laughs> we gonna get in trouble. <laughs> but it turns out when we end up going to the, um, the cooking class that Monday, we didn't get in trouble, whatever. And she was just like, the cooking teacher lady was just like, I know some of you left early. I do apologize because I was not here, blah, blah, blah. And I didn't know when, because there are times we will go there and all of a sudden she would call and be like, okay, um, unfortunately, students, the class is over, so please go back. And we were like, yes, because I would just go back to Job Corps and just hang out, hang out at the, the, the um, they call they have something called the alley at Job Corps over there, downtown LA. And they used to just walk around until it was time for me to go back up into the room. Because uh, I actually lived there for about five months and then I moved to the honor dorms in Santa Monica. But anyway, um, that girl, um, she grabbed my hand. I don't know why when I'm holding hands with people, like even at church for prayer, or when somebody grabs my hand or puts their arm on me, I go, because I, I, I'm fascinated with how people smell. And then even when they hold my hands, I'll be like, 
Now, I don't do that while they're holding my hand. After prayer, I go. And I'll be like, I'm just fascinated with how people smell. So when she grabbed my hand, I remember going, when we was on a bus, and I'm thinking, oh, I didn't smell anything. But that's okay. But she grabbed my hand, and this is the same girl I had a crush on in Job Corps. But that crush did leave. Um, when I met another guy, you know, but just thinking about that, like I had a crush on this girl. She was so, so cute to me. And I even tried to find her on Facebook back when I used to stay in Long Beach. I tried to find her, but anyway, um, I just thought I'd share that with you guys because it's time for me to just come on out, break on out, get a, get everything out. And it has a lot to do with why when I'm around guys, I get so nervous, I get so stiff, I get so whatever you want to call it, because I don't know how to act. If I really like a person, I can't just be like, so what are we going to do today? I have to be like, oh, hi, yeah, yeah, you know, because I really like them and I don't want to show too much comfortability, comfortability around them because it may not be that. Like, well, dang, this girl was all comfortable. I'm like, I don't know what she thought this was. I mean, she better, you know. You know, whatever. My nose is running. Sorry. Um, but yeah. And this is the first time, first couple of times that I've expressed this without crying. And I'm glad too. Oh, because I need to be freed. I need to get this out. And I want all my Royal Shenanigans out there to know more about me than just basic information. Now some people may think, um, why are you telling all your business? On a social media platform to a bunch of strangers. People do worse with strangers. Okay. That's all. And I'm going to keep it there. That's it. But I want y'all to get to know more about me. Because maybe I want to help somebody other. Even if it's just a half a person. Even if it's just. Not a half. Even if it's just one person. And whatever. But I know I had to do this because. I'm tired of this. The. What do you call it? The the icing on the cake. Let's cut the cake and get to the bread. Let's taste the ingredients. Let's see what this person used. Let's see if they use a, a secret ingredient. You know what I mean? Because everything looks pretty on the outside. But when you cut it, that's what matters. The inside stuff is what matters. So instead of giving you guys the same videos all the time, I decided to do something new and different and tell you guys a little bit about my story. Now, this was so long overdue. You know, months ago, like two or three months ago, I was supposed to been do this video. But I wanted to make sure that time, and I prayed about it, and thoughts, I didn't actually pray about it. I'm just like, let me just, let me just get this out. I'm talking about being free and being, and being brand new, but let me go ahead and get this out. You want to know why? Because I want to be free. That's it. And I want you guys, if it's Ashy right here, I'm, I swear it is that Mitchum's gel deodorant is making me ashy, but it smells so good. But anyway... I want to be free and hopefully I help somebody out there. If not, hopefully I help somebody y'all know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and end this and say thank you guys so much for watching my videos. Thank you so much for watching, subscribing, those who have subscribed and even those who view. I appreciate y'all so much. Um... Thank you for your support. Thank you. And thank you for listening to a little bit of my story. That is the most traumatic thing I've ever experienced in my life. Being dumped in by this guy and that guy and heartache and all that is nothing compared to what somebody I I su supposed to be calling. You're my dad. Now, I'm supposed to be running home and being safe from people that will do this outside. But it happens more and more and more in the family. <laughs> I have a mustache. I'm sorry. I'm trying to be serious, but like it happens more and more and more in house. And that's what's so sad to me. And that's what F's people up, you know? So I know I sound nasally, but oh, God, this cold is stupid. Anyway, you guys, I got to go finish my hair. By the way, um, I am. Let me show y'all real quick. I have one pack left and and this from the first pack so hopefully 
so hopefully um all of this because I have I have here all of this out right here and I have some up here I'm making them big because number one I'm trying to hurry up and get finished and number two I'm trying to make them look as natural as possible so so far it looks like I actually braided my actual natural hair you see it looks like it's mine kind of that's the goal and that's the look that I was going for so I decided to kind of three strand braid them okay I just want to show y'all real quick and then towards the end I two strand twisted just to hurry up and get done you know and I'm gonna dip them later on maybe maybe not and I'm gonna like put a put um those curling things on it and curl them to see what they do and I right, that's it but I like the natural coil looking curls that's at the end almost not coil but like that bushy 4c texture type hair that's at the ends I love that um I kind of wish my hair was thick you know, I really don't care about length, but I wish it was thick because sometimes you don't have to have long hair for it to be healthy. You can have short, thick hair and it's healthy. But anyway, I don't want to change the subject. I just want to say thank you all for listening to my story. I appreciate each and every last one of my subscribers, everybody who view, and hopefully this will help somebody. See you on the next one. Bye with my mustache.